It's all your fault. You'll be in big trouble if we miss the flight. Shinwei glanced at her watch while opening the back door of the taxi, grumbling at her husband, Hang Shuz. Hang Shuz was busy loading their luggage into the trunk with the driver's help. Seeing Shen Wei's angry expression, he looked down and smiled helplessly. Once Hang Shiz got into the car, Shen Wei turned her head away, purposely ignoring him. Hang Shiz quickly put on a sheepish smile, wrapping his arm around her shoulders. Don't worry, we'll make it in time. You still dare say that. The plane leaves in half an hour. Shen Wei smacked Hang Shiz's shoulder, still fuming. If we miss this flight, all our overseas reservations and sightseeing plans will be ruined. Both Shen Wei and Hang Shiz were usually busy with work. This time, they had managed to take time off for their seventh wedding anniversary, planning to spend it abroad. But this morning, Hang Shiz had received an urgent phone call for a meeting, throwing their schedule off track. By the time they left the house, there was only half an hour before the flight. Shen Wei was always the anxious type, while Hang Shiz was the classic slowpoke with a catchphrase of, take it easy. Perhaps it was this complementary nature that had kept them lovingly together through more than a decade of dating and marriage. However, when you've been with someone for so long, there are moments when you can't stand the sight of them, like Shen Wei now, finding Hang Shiz utterly irritating. Driver, could you please drive a bit faster? We're in a hurry, Shen Wei said, sitting upright, her tone anxious. The driver glanced at the young couple through the rearview mirror, understanding what was going on. He smiled and said, Don't worry, I'll get you there in time. With that, he stepped on the gas pedal, almost to the floor. As they got closer to the airport, Shen Wei's heart finally began to settle. Hang Shiz held her hand, smiling indulgently. Shen Wei, still a bit annoyed, gave him a sideways glare. At the last intersection, the driver turned halfway around and said to the two of them, just past here is the airport. This road is usually quiet with little traffic. I always take this shortcut for passengers in a hurry. Shen Wei sincerely said, thank you, driver. But just as her words fell, a truck suddenly sped through the intersection, running the red light without slowing down at all. The driver quickly swerved the wheel, and in Shen Wei's last memory, she saw the terrified, twisted face of the truck driver reflected in her widening pupils. In those final moments, all that remained in Shen Wei's mind was the deformed front of the car from the truck's impact and the lingering warmth of Hang Shu's instinctively shielding her. Hang Shu's, don't leave me. Chapter 1. Always be by your side. The twisted taxi, the terrified truck driver, and Hang Shu's bloodied, unrecognizable face. All of it made Shen Wei desperately hope that it was just a nightmare. If only she could wake up and find Hang Shu still beside her, listening to her nag, her complaints, and her dreams of their future together in the next 10, 20 years. Shen Wei struggled, trying to wake up. Her consciousness slowly returned. The scenes before her, once like frost in the air, began to solidify, then melt away until they disappeared completely. Shuz! Shen Wei screamed as she awoke, her face pale and drenched in cold sweat. It had been just a nightmare. But the stark white ICU and her parents' anxious expressions reminded Shen Wei that the car accident was not just a dream. Wei Wei, you're finally awake. You scared me to death. Her mother looked like she had aged 10 years, her face haggard. Mom, where's Shuz? Shen Wei could only think of him, clutching her mother's sleeve tightly, tears streaming down her face. Her mother held her hand, gently brushing the hair from her forehead, trying to comfort her. Don't worry, Shiz is fine. He's been moved to a regular ward. As she spoke, tears welled up in her mother's eyes. But you, you've been in a coma for seven days. The doctor said if you didn't wake up soon, you might have. Her mother didn't finish, but Shen Wei knew she could have ended up in a vegetative state. Hearing that Shiz was all right, 
Shen Wei finally relaxed, but a new worry crept in. She frowned and asked, Mom, you're not lying to me, right? Is Shiz really okay? In that situation, how could he be less injured than me? She vividly remembered Shiz shielding her with his body when the truck crashed into them. Shiz is really fine. Your father has already gone to inform him. You'll see him soon, her mother reassured, patting her hand gently. Seeing her mother's sincere expression, Shen Wei finally let out a long sigh of relief. Thank goodness. Thank goodness both she and Shiz were alright. About ten minutes later, the door to her hospital room opened, and her in-laws and father helped Hang Shiz inside. The moment their eyes met, Hang Shiz's gaze was filled with unconcealed joy. He immediately let go of them, stumbled forward with his crutches, and hurriedly made his way to Shen Wei. For the first time, Shen Wei saw the usually calm Hang Shi so eager. Wei Wei. Hang Shi bent down and hugged her tightly, his voice trembling with the relief and joy of surviving the ordeal. Shiz, I thought I'd never see you again. Shen Wei broke down into tears, her sobs full of pain and relief. Never. I'll always be by your side. Hang Shi closed his eyes briefly, and when he opened them again, they were clear and bright. A gentle smile began to form at the corners of his mouth. Wei Wei, you and Shiz both need to rest well. You survived this ordeal, and we must thank our ancestors for watching over us, her mother-in-law said, her voice quivering, hands clasped in prayer, her eyes brimming with tears. Shen Wei looked at her husband, at her parents and in-laws, and felt a deep sense of contentment. How wonderful it was that the people she loved, and those who loved her, were all still with her. She hugged Hang Shiz tightly, as if he were as light as a breeze, ready to wither away at any moment. After spending over a month in the hospital, Shen Wei and Hang Shiz were finally discharged. Upon returning home, the first thing Hang Shiz did was resign from his job. When Shen Wei first heard this news, she couldn't believe it. Despite his mild-mannered personality, Hang Shiz was an ambitious workaholic who had just been promoted to supervisor at the beginning of the year. Although the car accident had caused him to take a month off for recovery, his position as a key technical talent in the company had been held open for him. Shen Wei couldn't fathom why he would want to quit. But Hang Shiz explained, Wei Wei, the car accident made me realize a lot of things. He pulled Shen Wei close, holding her hand tenderly as he spoke. We've been together for over 10 years, but in the seven years since we got married, I've been so focused on providing you with a better life that I haven't had time to truly be with you. When the truck was about to hit us, the only thing I could think of was how much I wanted to spend more time with you. Tears began to well up in Shen Wei's eyes. She sniffled, playfully punched him, and then broke into a smile. Young Master Hang, when did you become so sentimental? Is this an IT guy's enlightenment? Hang Shiz kissed her forehead lightly, his voice soft. Consider it that as long as it makes you happy. With that, he suddenly took Shen Wei by the hand and led her toward the study. What's going on? Shen Wei asked, puzzled, as she followed him. It wasn't until they reached the study that Hang Shu's let go of her hand, guiding her to sit in a chair. He then handed her a pen. Wei Wei, I don't know what I need to do to make you happy, so I want you to write it down. Everything you want me to make up to you. Shen Wei looked at Hang Shu's, who was kneeling beside her, and felt a fleeting sense of unease, but it was quickly overwhelmed by a wave of warmth and comfort. She cupped his face in her hands, her smile as radiant as a blooming flower. You've already been so good to me, really. Hang Shiz placed his hand over hers, his voice tinged with bitterness. But it's not enough, not the best it could be. So please, write it down, Wei Wei. With a playful sigh of exasperation, Shen Wei said, You've become more impatient than I am since the accident. You just have to do whatever comes to mind right away. This isn't like you at all. 
Despite her teasing, she obediently took the paper and pen, her brow furrowing in thought. Shuz, how many should I write? It seems like there's so much. She stuck out her tongue playfully. Start with seven. Let's finish those first. Shinwei agreed and began writing. When she reached the seventh item, she paused, her face scrunched up in frustration. I can't think of the last one right now. Can I leave it blank for now? Hang Shiz took the paper from her, a small smile tugging at his lips. All right. Time stretches on, the sun shines brightly, and the one he loves is right in front of him. Yet Hengshiz feels so powerless. It's not the mountains or seas that are insurmountable, it's his boundless love for Shen Wei. Chapter 2 The First Small Task The first small request Shen Wei made of Hengshiz was for him to cook her a meal. Hengshiz had always doted on Shen Wei, taking care of all the household chores while working hard to provide for her, ensuring that her hands remained soft and unblemished. However, despite his seemingly perfect demeanor, Hengshiz had one undeniable weakness. He was utterly clueless in the kitchen. When they first got married, Shen Wei didn't mind at all. She claimed that even though her cooking skills were average, she could still manage to make a decent meal. But Heng Shiz always felt guilty, especially after seeing her cough from the kitchen fumes on multiple occasions. Eventually, he insisted on hiring a housekeeper to handle the cooking. Over time, the couple grew accustomed to a kitchen devoid of any signs of cooking. Why did you suddenly want me to cook for you? Heng Shiz asked, raising an eyebrow as he looked at the list, then turned to Shen Wei. Aren't you worried I might mess it up? After the accident, the two had grown even closer, rekindling a romance that had once been eroded by the daily grind of marriage. Shen Wei clung to Hang Shi's arm, letting out a delicate hum. I'm not afraid at all. I want to remember what it's like to have you cook for me so that when we're old, I'll have something to look back on. Hang Shi's gently ruffled her hair without a word of protest. Shall we go to the supermarket now to buy groceries? He asked. Okay. As Shen Wei skipped off to the dressing room to change clothes, Hang Shiz let out a small sigh. In the days to come, he was determined to make sure Shen Wei was happy every single day, so that if they ever had to part again, she would at least have these memories to carry with her. By the time they returned from the supermarket, it was nearly six o'clock. But as they stood in front of the countertop filled with fresh vegetables and various meats, they both found themselves at a loss, staring at each other in bewilderment. Don't look at me. You're the one cooking, Shen Wei said, feeling a bit guilty. Besides, I haven't cooked in years. I'm really out of practice. Hang Shiz pouted, turning his head away with a hint of mock disappointment. Yet, deep down, he felt an unexpected surge of determination. No problem, I can do anything, he declared, more to boost his own confidence than anything else. He pulled a carrot out of the bag, studied it for a moment, then said, Maybe I'll cut this up and make some carrot and pork rib soup? That's a lovely idea, Shen Wei said, arms crossed, without sparing his feelings. As Shen Wei watched Hang Shi's frown in concentration, his expression so intense it seemed capable of killing a fly, she was reminded of the teenage Hang Shi's she had known years ago. Back in high school, Hang Shiz had been a star student, a true young master who seemed capable of anything. But in their senior year, when their young romance was discovered by Shen Wei's mother, she had snuck out late at night to discuss what to do with him. It was then that she first noticed how thin and frail his shoulders still were. Yet even then, with a resolute expression on his face and his brows knit tightly together, he had told her, Wei Wei, don't worry. No matter what, I won't let you go. It was at that moment Shen Wei decided that no matter what challenges they faced, or how smooth the road ahead might be, she would stick with this young master for the rest of her life. Shen Wei snapped out of her reverie to find Hang Shiz awkwardly chopping the carrot. His technique was amateurish at best, some pieces were thick, others thin, all of them irregular. She couldn't help but laugh out loud, but Hang Shiz remained unfazed, his expression solemn and focused. If you ignored the chopping board, you might have thought he was a Michelin-starred chef. Yes, this was always Hang Shiz's way. No matter what he did, 
Even if he was internally struggling, he could always maintain an outward calm. As she hugged him from behind, Hengshiz paused his chopping, then smiled and asked, What's wrong? Shiz, I'm really scared this is all just a dream. Shen Wei held onto his lean waist, suddenly feeling a wave of unease. The happier she was, the more anxious she became, worried that something might go wrong in the future. Perhaps it was a lingering effect of the accident. After all, the bloodshed was a testament to the intensity of their love. It's not a dream. I'm right here with you, so don't be afraid. Heng Shi's words seemed to have a magical effect, calming Shen Wei's nerves. That evening's dinner turned out to be as chaotic as expected. In the process, two bowls and a pot lid were broken, a pot of soup was ruined, and one dish was burned. In the end, they had to make do with a slightly overcooked plate of scrambled eggs with tomatoes, which somehow ended up being the best dish of the night. As for the rest of the ingredients, they were likely destined to remain in the fridge until they rotted, never to see the light of day again. Chapter 3 The Second Small Task The second thing Shen Wei asked Hang Shiz to do for her was to play a basketball game. Shen Wei still remembered that when they were in school, Hang Shiz had promised her that he would win a provincial MVP for her. With Hang Shiz's skills, Shen Wei had no doubts about it. However, just before the game, Hang Shiz twisted his ankle during a practice session. After getting it checked, it was confirmed to be a muscle strain, making it impossible for him to engage in intense physical activity for some time. This matter was thus put on hold. Later, after graduation, Hang Shiz became increasingly busy with work. Apart from the occasional visit to the gym, he never returned to the basketball court. One day, Shen Wei suddenly wanted to see Hang Shiz's spirited appearance on the court again. After work, Shen Wei went straight to the sports hall of number one high school, as they had agreed. While locking her bicycle, she was suddenly grabbed from behind and lifted into the air. Shen Wei was startled and began to kick her legs in a panic until she heard Hang Shiz's laughter behind her, calming her nerves. Hey, put me down. There are so many students watching. Shen Wei said, slapping Hang Shiz's arm and glancing around in embarrassment. Hang Shiz finally put her down, his face full of nonchalant amusement. What's there to be afraid of? Remember when we got caught kissing in the garage by the dean? Thinking of that incident made Shen Wei even more embarrassed. She still remembered how, when the dean's flashlight beam swept over them, Hang Shiz quickly pressed her face against his chest and then grabbed her hand to run, a feeling so tense it made her heart race. Looking back now, it seemed their youth wasn't as uneventful as it felt. Come on! Shen Wei grabbed Hang Shiz and headed towards the sports hall. This time, the players Hang Shiz had arranged for the basketball game were some friends and boys from high school. Dressed in a red and white basketball uniform, with white wristbands and a red headband, Hang Shiz stood among the high school students, surprisingly blending in without the slightest awkwardness. As soon as the first half began, Hang Shiz widened the gap between his team and the opponents with a beautiful three-point shot, filling Shen Wei with pride. Nearby, a group of girls began to gather and whisper among themselves. Who's that number three? Which class is he in? I've never seen him before. There's no one that good looking in our school. Maybe he's from number three high school. They're known for having handsome guys, even though their grades are poor. Oh my God, he's really handsome. Let's go ask for his number later. Are you in? Let's go together. Listening to the girls talk about Hang Shiz, Shen Wei felt a mix of pride and worry. How is it that even at 30, Hang Shiz could still attract so much attention? He was always charming young girls. Ahem, I know him. Shen Wei decided to put an end to the girls' fantasies. The girls seemed interested, though there was a hint of disdain in their eyes as they looked at Shen Wei. Still, they couldn't help but ask, who is he? Shen Wei lifted her chin with a proud smile. He's my husband. One of the girls looked at her with contempt. Auntie, you better stop bragging, or you might get sued for defamation. Who's bragging? If you call me auntie, then you should be calling him uncle. Shen Wei didn't realize how childish she looked, arguing with a group of high schoolers. During a break in the game, Hang Shiz glanced over at the stands and saw Shen Wei mingling with a group of young girls. 
He couldn't help but raise an eyebrow, amused at how his wife could charm both young and old alike. After much persuasion, the girls finally believed that Hang Shiz was 30 years old and Shen Wei's husband, though their eyes were still full of hostility towards Shen Wei. If I were born in his generation, you'd be out of the picture by now. One of the girls, who seemed particularly tough, said with disdain while chewing gum. Shen Wei's competitive spirit flared up. With a fake smile, she said word by word, Sorry, he was mine when he was a teenager. During the halftime break, Shen Wei grabbed a bottle of water and walked over to Hang Shiz, giving the girl one last glare as she handed him the water. Hang Shiz took the bottle, pulled her close, and playfully pinched her nose. Why so eager? Of course, our master Hang is so amazing, Shen Wei said, glancing at the scoreboard with a flattering smile. Hang Shiz looked satisfied and content. On the way home, Shen Wei sat on the back of Hang Shiz's bicycle, holding onto him tightly. From now on, you're not allowed to play basketball anymore. No, you're not allowed to go to any sports venue where you'll be sweating. Hang Shiz teased her. Why is that? Shen Wei bit her lip and retorted, What do you think? Hang Shiz thought of the young girls who had eagerly offered him water and sports drinks, even daring to ask for his number right in front of Shen Wei. He understood. Did you suddenly think my hormones are off the charts? Stop being so smug. Shen Wei wondered why she hadn't noticed how popular her husband was before. Marriage must have blinded her. Yes, ma'am. Hold on tight. I'm going to speed up, Hang Shiz said cheerfully. As the wind filled his jacket, Shen Wei leaned against him, soaking in the evening breeze, her heart brimming with happiness. No matter if it was sunny or stormy, she would always have Hang Shiz standing before her. Chapter 4 The Third and Fourth Little Things The third thing Shen Wei wanted Hang Shiz to do was to pick her up from work. The fourth was to attend a gathering with her friends. Ever since Hang Shiz's promotion two years ago, his work hours had often extended beyond hers. It had been years since he last picked her up from work, and even longer since he joined her at any social event. Some of Shen Wei's newer friends hadn't even met him. Today, Shen Wei needed to work late, and with a colleague dinner planned afterward, she decided to cross off both items on her list. As the city lights began to twinkle, Shen Wei turned off her computer, stretched, and started tidying her desk, humming a tune to herself. A colleague asked, Shen Wei, want a ride to the restaurant? No need. Shen Wei waved her hand. My husband is picking me up today. That's rare. See you later then. See you. Downstairs, Shen Wei quickly spotted Hang Shiz leaning against a nearby wall, hands in his pockets, casually kicking at the pebbles on the ground. The oversized Korean-style puffer jacket made him look a bit leaner. Shiz. Shen Wei called out from a distance. Hearing her voice, Hang Shiz looked up, his eyes reflecting the lights of the night sky. Despite wearing high heels, Shen Wei couldn't contain her excitement. She started running towards him, her steps quickening. Slow down, don't trip. Hang Shiz must have jinxed it because, before he could finish his sentence, Shen Wei stumbled and fell. As she hit the ground, Shen Wei groaned internally. Great, there goes my image. Too embarrassed to move, Shen Wei buried her face in her arms, lying flat on the ground. She silently chanted to herself, Hang Shiz didn't see me fall, didn't see, didn't see. But Shen Wei clearly remembered seeing Hang Shiz rush over just before she fell. Now, after some time had passed with no movement, she cautiously peeked up, only to find Hang Shiz already crouched in front of her, struggling to hold back laughter at her futile attempt to hide. The soft glow of the street lamp stretched his shadow across the pavement. Shen Wei mechanically turned her head and once again buried it in her arms. Hang Shiz, with a teasing smile, watched her and couldn't resist poking her. When she didn't respond, he grabbed her jacket collar and, like a kitten, lifted her to her feet. Shen Wei hurriedly used her arm to cover her face, but Hang Shiz gently pulled her hand down to check for any injuries. After confirming she wasn't hurt, he sighed in relief and smiled. Did it hurt? She blinked and was about to shake her head, but then thought better of it and said, It hurt a lot. Hang Shiz asked, Where does it hurt? Everywhere. 
Shen Wei pouted, but the slight smile tugging at her lips betrayed her playful intentions. She then added, especially my pride. Hang Shiz realized that Shen Wei was acting spoiled. He pulled her into his arms and patiently comforted her. I didn't see anything. Don't be upset, okay? Only then did Shen Wei let it go, nestling her head against his chest. When they arrived at the restaurant, Hang Shiz caught everyone's attention. Some of Shen Wei's colleagues whistled, while others looked at him with curious smiles. Shen Wei felt a bit embarrassed, but Hang Shiz, ever composed, pulled her to sit beside him. Shen Wei introduced, This is my husband, Hang Shiz. Master Hang was quite the legend back in our high school days. Let me pay my respects. The colleague speaking, Bai Chu, had attended the same high school as Shen Wei and Hang Shiz. Shen Wei laughed, Bai Chu, don't start. Hang Shiz smiled as well, his demeanor calm and composed. I don't care. It's been years since I last saw you two, and you're late. Each of you owes three drinks, Bai Chu declared, signaling for others to pour drinks for the couple. Hang Shiz responded, Shen Wei isn't much of a drinker, I'll take hers. Nonsense. Shen Wei claims she can drink anyone under the table. She should drink her own. Another colleague teased, insisting Shen Wei drink. Hang Shiz leaned in close to Shen Wei, whispering in a mock-threatening tone, So you've been secretly drinking behind my back? You've got some nerve. Shen Wei gulped and muttered softly, Not really. The dinner proceeded in a lively and cheerful atmosphere. By the end of the meal, Shen Wei's face was flushed red, while Hang Shiz remained as composed as ever. He helped her up, politely bidding farewell to her colleagues as they left. In the car on the way home, Shen Wei's mind was already a bit foggy. She played with Hang Shiz's fingers and asked, Did anyone get drunk tonight? I'm not sure, Hang Shiz replied nonchalantly, adjusting her position to make her more comfortable. How could you not know? Were you daydreaming? I was too busy watching out for you. How could I pay attention to anyone else? Hang Shiz's tone hinted at some frustration. No more sneaking drinks behind my back, or you'll be in big trouble. Shen Wei let out a soft hum, her voice sweet and gentle. But if I get drunk, I know I've got you to take me home. Hang Shiz didn't respond this time. He simply held Shen Wei closer, letting out a barely audible sigh. But what if one day I'm not there anymore? What would you do then? Chapter 5 The Fifth Little Thing The fifth thing Shen Wei wanted Hang Shiz to do was to visit their high school together. It was where their relationship had begun. On the weekend, Hang Shiz arranged with the gatekeeper to let them in. They first visited Hang Shiz's former class, the experimental class. Upon entering, Shen Wei smiled and said, The experimental class is different from our regular classes, huh? Hang Shiz said nothing, taking a seat and resting his head on his hands as he watched her. I heard that this year, the experimental class has been renamed the rocket class. Shen Wei sat on the desk next to Hang Shiz, swinging her legs, looking quite charming. My class wasn't anything special, just a bunch of bookworms. Let's go to your class, Hang Shiz said, lifting Shen Wei off the desk. When they reached Shen Wei's class 7, Hang Shiz immediately pointed to the second to last row by the window and said, that was your seat. Shen Wei giggled, you remember that? After all, I delivered breakfast to you for two whole years. Hang Shiz said with a smile. He was likely recalling the times when he would get up early to buy buns for Shen Wei from a shop near his house, despite his own struggle to wake up early. Darling, how did you end up liking me back then? Shen Wei asked, holding Hang Shi's hand and leaning her head on his arm. Because you are the only one in the whole school who treated me like I didn't exist, Hang Shi said, rubbing his nose, unusually shy. The more you ignored me, the more I couldn't help but watch you. And the more I watched, the more I liked you. Well, what about that time you confidently dragged me up to the school rooftop after evening study, thinking I would definitely say yes? Shen Wei teased. If you had said no, I would have gone down with you, Hang Shiz joked. In fact, Hang Shiz had been quite confident because he knew Shen Wei was also secretly interested in him. On the day he confessed his feelings, Hang Shiz had seen Shen Wei sleeping at her desk after their sports class. He noticed her resting peacefully, with a book covering her face from the sunlight. 
Noticing no one else around, he quietly entered the classroom and sat at the desk in front of her, observing her up close. The proximity allowed him to see every detail of Shen Wei's face, the curve of her eyebrows, her eyelashes, even the tiny hairs on her cheeks. He gently brushed a stray lock of hair from her face and placed the book back to shield her from the sunlight, which had been making her frown. The sight of her relaxed brow made Hang Shu's smile contentedly. At that moment, a love letter with to Hang Shu's written on it had fallen out of her book. Hang Shu's had been overjoyed and excited, more so than if he had topped his class or gotten assigned basketball from Kobe Bryant. He read the letter over and over, carefully folded it back, and left the classroom when he heard some noise downstairs. He waited the whole day, hoping Shen Wei would give him the letter, but she didn't. He wondered if she was revising it late at night, debating whether to lock it away in a drawer. Oh, how could she be so clueless about his feelings? Later, during the evening study session, Heng Shiz decided to confess his feelings directly, fearing that waiting would make him anxious and restless. Looking at Shen Wei now, with her delicate features softened by time, Heng Shiz felt a surge of tenderness. She had been with him from their youthful days to his present age of 30, and he felt deep love and gratitude for her. He still remembered the end of that love letter, where Shen Wei had written, Without you, no matter how many clothes I wear, I would still freeze. Shiz, it's almost time for the high school students' class. Let's go, Shen Wei said, glancing at the activity outside the door. All right. Hang Shiz took Shen Wei's hand and led her out of the classroom. Just like before the college entrance exams, Hang Shiz held Shen Wei's hand openly as they walked out of class 7, facing the gaze of her homeroom teacher, heading together towards their future. Chapter 6, The Sixth Little Thing The sixth thing Shen Wei wanted Hang Shiz to do was to accompany her to a temple to offer incense. There were two reasons. First, to thank the Buddha for protecting them and allowing them to escape danger. Second, Shen Wei wanted a child with Hang Shiz. After seven years of marriage, they had no children. Hang Shiz believed Shen Wei was still too young herself and wanted to earn more money to provide better living conditions for their future child. Shen Wei had always been indifferent to the idea of having children, but after the recent car accident, she was determined to have a baby. On the way to the temple, Hang Shiz appeared to be preoccupied. Shen Wei, seeing his worried expression, asked, are you feeling unwell again? Since the accident, Hang Shu's health had seemed to deteriorate with frequent issues lately, which worried Shen Wei. However, Hang Shu's always reassured her that it wasn't serious. No, I'm just thinking that. Maybe we don't have to go to the temple. Relieved that it wasn't due to his health, Shen Wei said, it's always good to be sincere. Hang Shu's responded absently. Upon arriving at the temple and parking the car, Shen Wei realized she had forgotten to bring the incense in her rush. She told Hang Shiz, Wait here, I'll go buy some incense. Hang Shiz nodded, still looking troubled. When Shen Wei returned with the incense, Hang Shiz was nowhere to be seen. Assuming he had entered the temple early, she went inside. However, after offering incense and paying her respects, she still didn't see Hang Shiz. She walked toward the parking lot dialing his number. The phone rang nearby. Shen Wei looked up and saw Hang Shiz leaning against a tree, looking contemplative. She sighed and ran over, slightly reproaching. Where did you go? You disappeared in a matter of minutes. Hang Shiz seemed to smile and explained. I ran into an old monk who insisted on giving me a fortune. What did he say? Intrigued, Shen Wei linked her arm with his as they walked, asking. He said my wife will live to a ripe old age. Huh, why didn't he mention you? Shen Wei realized Hang Shiz was teasing her and decided to play along rather than get upset. I forgot. I just remembered to tell you, Hang Shiz said, feeling his strength waning but still managing to keep up the pretense with a smile. My husband, you're so sweet. Shen Wei stood on tiptoe and patted Hang Shiz's face, beaming with happiness. In the middle of the night, Shen Wei dreamed again of the car accident. Waking up suddenly, she reached out to hold Hang Shu's, but found the bed beside her empty. She touched the bed and found it cold, indicating that Hang Shu's had been up for a while. She padded out of the room and saw light coming from under the door of the study. Shu's, it's so late. 
What are you doing? Shinwei opened the door and saw Hang Shi sitting at the desk, organizing some papers. Hang Shi looked up, saw Shinwei at the door, and then noticed her bare feet. He frowned slightly, walked over, and picked her up. I've told you many times not to walk around barefoot. If I'm not here, who will take care of you if you catch a cold? What do you mean if I'm not here? Where are you going? Shen Wei seized on his words, her concern growing. What's happening? I'm talking about just in case, in case. I'm not home, Hang Shiz explained weakly, lowering his gaze. Shen Wei sighed in relief. Don't scare me like that. Hang Shiz pressed his lips together and set her on his lap. He then picked up the pile of documents he had been organizing and began to explain carefully. These are two property documents in my name. One is for the house we chose together, Shui Tian Villa, and the other is a villa I bought secretly. I wanted to give it to you as a birthday gift this year. Then give it to me for my birthday. Why the rush now? Shen Wei began to feel uneasy, but tried to suppress her fear, forcing a smile as she asked. Wei Wei, listen to me and don't ask questions. I don't have much time left. Hang Shiz then took out a passbook and bank cards. This is all our liquid assets. The passbook contains our family fund savings, totaling 2,100,000. The bank card is for my salary account. It has my salary for the year, about 600,000. The password is your birthday. Oh, and there's an additional 700,000 invested in stocks and other investments. I've entrusted it to a manager. You'll just receive the dividends every month. Shen Wei held Hang Shu's hand, tears starting to form on her face. She shook her head, saying, I don't want to know all this. If you're here with me, why should I need to know? Are you going somewhere? Is there someone else outside? I, I forgive you. Please don't leave me. Shen Wei's mind raced with the thought of Hang Shi's strange behavior. She tried to think of every possible reason, but ultimately, she realized, she would accept any outcome as long as Hang Shi's didn't leave her. Hang Shiz wiped away her tears with his fingers, a bitter smile on his face. Don't say such silly things. There's no one else but you. Wei Wei, if I'm not here in the future, you need to take care of yourself. Hang Shiz said, pulling out an insurance policy. Before the accident, I took out a policy. You're the beneficiary. If something happens to me, you'll get the compensation. Shen Wei saw that the insurance amount was 80,000 and felt even more distressed, as if some truth was about to be revealed. I don't want this money. What would I do with it? Shen Wei grabbed the policy and tore it apart in front of Hang Shi's, then angrily threw the pieces on the floor. Why would I need this policy if you're right here? Hang Shi's embraced her, burying his head in her neck. Slowly, Shen Wei felt the wetness on her neck. Hang Shi's was crying. But why was he crying? Why scare her like this? They were already lucky to survive, so why make her fear like this? Chapter 7 Seventh Small Thing Before long, the sky began to lighten with the first hints of dawn. Hang Shiz lifted Shen Wei and placed her back on the bed, changing her clothes and carefully putting on her shoes. He then sat by her side, looking at her with deep sorrow. Wei Wei, it's dawn. It's time to wake up. Shen Wei, her face streaked with tears, forced a smile and asked, Wake up? Haven't I always been awake? Hang Shiz closed his eyes, burying his head in Shen Wei's lap with a bitter smile. Wei Wei, the seventh thing I've done for you is to help you wake up, to carry with you the beauty between us, and to live well. Shen Wei felt as though all her strength had been drained. When she finally realized where she was, the word, hospital, loomed before her eyes. Shiz, why are we here? Who is sick? Hang Shiz didn't answer, but simply took her hand and led her upstairs. As the sky grew brighter, Shen Wei felt increasingly tired, and Hang Shiz seemed almost ethereal, his presence becoming faint as he held her hand. When they reached the floor, Shen Wei recognized the surroundings as familiar. She was certain she had been here before. Looking up, she saw that the digital clock in the hallway read December 31st, 2017, 435. December 31st? How could it be December 31st? 
She remembered clearly that the day of the accident was December 24th, Christmas Eve. They had spent over a month in the hospital and nearly another month at home. How could only seven days have passed? Shinwei started to tremble, her body shaking more violently like reeds in a cold autumn wind. No, shuz, I don't want to go. I want to go home. Let's go home. She stopped in her tracks, pulling Heng Shu's hand as if her strength had never been greater, fueled by desperation and every ounce of potential. Heng Shu's held her tightly from behind, his voice trembling with emotion. Wei Wei, don't be afraid. When we get there, you'll wake up. I don't want this. Shuz, you can't do this to me. Shen Wei cried, her body starting to slump. But this time, Heng Shiz did not indulge her as he had for over a decade. Instead, he carried her towards the intensive care unit. At the door of the ICU, Shen Wei's voice had become almost a hoarse whisper. When Heng Shiz opened the door, Shen Wei knew, in that moment, he was truly leaving her. Because this ICU was the one where she had woken up. On the bed lay her own body. If not for the white bandages and the tubes attached to her face, Shen Wei would have thought she was merely sleeping. Standing at the door, Shen Wei closed her eyes. She felt Heng Shu's hand slipping away, losing its touch. Opening her eyes, Heng Shu's figure began to grow increasingly transparent. Shu's no. Shen Wei reached out to grasp him but found her fingers passing through his body. Shen Wei stood there, hands outstretched, in disbelief. Wei Wei, I, I really have to go. Heng Shu's beautiful eyes were filled with tears. I should have left long ago. It's your obsession that created this dream, and the dream version of me. So as long as I don't wake up, we can be together in the dream forever, can't we? Shen Wei pleaded, her eyes filled with hope. Heng Shi shook his head with a sad smile. Today is the seventh day since I died. I must leave. Everything in the dream is false. You need to wake up. Your parents are waiting for you to wake up. You need to live truly, understand? The sun rose gradually, and the sky turned a red silk-like hue, while Heng Shi's body grew more transparent until only a faint outline remained. Finally, Amidst endless pain, Shen Wei heard Hang Shi say, In a hundred years of life, I can only accompany you halfway. Wei Wei, I love you. Shen Wei saw the car accident again. The taxi crushed into a heap of metal, the truck crashing in, Hang Shi's protecting her and urging her not to be afraid, Hang Shi's covered in blood on top of her, and the quiet Hang Shi's being declared dead. Daybreak finally arrived. Shen Wei had slept for seven days, living through a long dream, and finally woke up. Opening her eyes, she saw her mother's bloodshot eyes. Tears rolled down Shen Wei's cheeks, and her voice caught in her throat as she cried out in a voice choked with grief. Mom, Shiz is gone. Shen Wei pressed her hand to her chest, which felt as though it had been crushed. Her mother's eyes were even redder. She didn't reassure Shen Wei as she had in the dream, saying Shiz was all right. From 17 to 31, Hang Shiz had been with her for 14 years. And he said, In a hundred years of life, I can only accompany you halfway. In the dream, Hang Shiz did seven loving things for her, and as she woke from the dream, she would carry so many memories, bravely living on amid the fleeting moments of the world.